welcome to Dubai, the place that I should not have been today. Um, <laughs> Um, let me explain. We arrived in yesterday, Josh Cahill and I got in on the Uganda Airlines A330neo from Entebbe yesterday morning at like 4am. Um, I was going to go off and get my next flight and Josh was going to stay here in Dubai. Um, we headed through to the baggage claim, went to get our bags and stood and waited. Um, and waited um, and waited some more because um, the bags didn't turn up. Two hours later, by the time the bags did show up, um, the check-in for my onward flight had closed and I missed it entirely. So um, I ended up stuck here in Dubai overnight. So now it's time to head to the airport and get the flight that I should have been on yesterday. Hi, right, check it out please. Thank you, yeah, you too. My stalker is still here. He's still stalking me around. <laughs> what, what, are you, what are you still doing here? What am I still doing here? I don't know, I like it so much. <laughs> yeah. It is a bit creepy, isn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah. You want a taxi? Um, you know, taxi. Yeah, a very good rate. Okay, um, yeah, I'll take a taxi with you. Let's go. <laughs> uh, terminal 1. One. Yes, please. Let's get going. Let's get going, yeah, exactly. In two different uh, Two different directions. airlines, yeah, yeah, you're going one way and I'm going the other. Yeah. We were both flying from the same terminal at Dubai today, Terminal 1, so we grabbed a taxi across to the airport. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Lovely to meet you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye -bye. Oh, it's blooming hot. It Who knew it got hot in Dubai? Yeah, yeah. You have to also fight. Insane, it's like, oh. It's worse when you have to wear pants. If Josh has to wear trousers today, have you ever seen Josh Cahill? This is a very rare sight. Very rare moment. Josh Cahill wearing trousers. Um, we'll explain why in a couple of minutes. <laughs> and black ones are that. So we're going to say goodbye in a minute. For the very last time, we thought we, we thought we said last, goodbye last time, didn't we? It is, it is, it is. And um, this man just can't get enough of me, clearly. That's and, it, um, that's it. And we're stuck together, actually. I'm or a can, is super it that fan. I, <laughs> I'm a super fan. Is it that I can't get enough of Josh because I ended up staying an extra night? But um, never mind. Um, but yeah, well, tell everybody where you're off to, Josh. I am going to uh, Iran on Mahan Air on an Airbus A310. So if you want to see what it's like to fly a sanction airline on one of the rarest planes in the world, still in service check uh, it out it's going to be amazing i'm so jealous Re yeah. really jealous of that i'd love to get on an a310 yeah, an i'd also to like to fly through iran but yeah. for british it's not as easy as it is for you germans you that's know good. you germans have never annoyed anybody in the history exactly. we so have always um, been a peaceful country that's yeah. what we stand for exactly uh, we have never caused any issues hence we can go hence to why you can go to iran yeah. and we're and, on the naughty list british, so um, yeah you know, don't even get me started on the british <laughs> <laughs> so yeah you have a great trip to iran man um and we in the meantime are going off on um, MEA on their A321 Neo because we're heading off to Istanbul um, with a stop in Beirut. With a stop in Beirut, yes. So uh, that'll be fun, won't it? Great so, journey. Great, yeah. beautiful plane. But I don't want to give away too much. No, 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 no. no. Yeah. We don't. We don't like giving everything away <laughs> early on in the video. So we're, um, yeah. It's, it's going to be a good day. We're having a PL moment. Yeah. <laughs> we, we are going to have a great flight today as well. So yeah, have a great trip, Josh, um, I and I will too. Yeah, and um, well, maybe maybe we will see each other again in a future video. Yeah. We'll no, see. thanks so, for yeah. the lovely time we had in, in Africa. It was a. It was a fantastic. It was, yeah. Fantastic, but probably by the time uh, they have probably seen all the videos. Right? Yeah, exactly. But if you haven't, then check them out. I'll pop yeah. a link up to the playlist on the screen so you can see them all. Very good. Right, I'll go this way, then you go that way. See you later, man. Bye bye. At this point, I thought I'd got rid of Josh once and for all, but on going through my footage afterwards, I saw that he'd followed me to the coffee shop and got the feeling that he just couldn't get enough of me. Caffeine purchased, it was time to go and check in for my flight to Beirut. Hey, good morning. Check in, please, for Istanbul. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Thank you. All right, all checked in. Look at that beautiful Emirates A380 right behind me. Um, I'm heading through now to security to go and fly on MEA to Beirut. All right, through security, time to find a lounge, um, see what there is here at Dubai Terminal 1. 
This was my first time flying from Dubai's Terminal 1. It's home to most international airlines at Dubai that aren't Emirates or Qantas, but to get to any of the gates you have to take this train from the main terminal. It's a bit of a trek and can add 10 to 15 minutes each way to your connection, so make sure you bear this in mind should you be on a connection with separate tickets here. Once I'd taken the train, it was time to find a lounge. Hello. Being a member of SkyTeam, MEA used the SkyTeam lounge here in Dubai. So welcome to the SkyTeam lounge here at Dubai Airport Terminal 1. And um, last time I was here, I think it was when I flew Saudi a couple of years ago in 2020 um, from here. So very nice lounge actually, um, not too bad at all. Very modern and light and airy and um, yeah, very spacious indeed. And not many people here. It's never been too busy when I've flown through here before. Which is quite nice. Um, so yeah, I'll sit down and grab a coffee, I think, and um, wait for me flight. Oh, and I finally got from Duty Free a new toothbrush um, to replace the one that the um, people in security people in either Senegal or Burkina Faso took from me when I took that flight and um, they took my toothbrush out of my suitcase after I checked it in I mean like the amount of stuff I've got in that suitcase I've got audio equipment microphones everything you name it no they didn't want any of that they wanted an electric toothbrush that somebody else had used um, <laughs> so I've been the entire Africa trip using it the old-fashioned way with a plastic one um, off an immunity kit but um, now Oh, I shall have fresh breath once again and a fresh mouth once again with my brand new electric toothbrush. Cannot wait to be using that when I get to the other end of this trip. All right then, time to say goodbye to Dubai and go and get on board the MEA A321neo to Beirut. My ride today was this beautiful aircraft delivered brand new just over a year ago. Now I don't know about you, but I absolutely love MEA's latest livery. Let me know what you think to it down in the comments. Right, so there she is, the beautiful MEA A321 Neo that's going to take me to Beirut today. Looking forward to this a lot. Um, they've been on my list for ages, actually, MEA, and I'm finally getting the chance to have a go on one and see what they're like. So, um, yeah, let's go head on board and find out. Boarding pass are four Thank you. Thank you. All right, then, time to get on board the MEA Middle East Airlines A321 Neo to Beirut. Let's go. Hello. How are you? Hello, sir. Good. Welcome on board. Thank you. All right then, welcome on board the MEA A321neo, Middle East Airlines, based over in Lebanon, in Beirut. Um, and um, this is this is the latest aircraft in their fleet, actually, the A321neo. It's very, very nice, actually, business class-wise. Look at that legroom there, in a lovely sort of 2-2 configuration you've got here um, going on, which is quite nice. Um, it's a reclining seat, I think, not a flatbed, um, which is fine because these only do sort of the short flights, like two or three hours um, or so. Not sure how long the flight to Beirut is from Dubai, so um, we'll figure it out, I guess, once we're airborne. There's no screens or anything. Maybe they pop down from above um, or out of the armrest, maybe. I don't know. We'll have to see how that goes um, later in the flight. But, um, oh yeah, there, there must be, actually, because there's a remote control just down here. Look. So there must be a um, TV. There we go. TV pops out just here. We'll have a look at that later. Um, when we go through the IFE, but very nice so far. Um, as we sit here waiting to go from Dubai for our flight up to Beirut. As the rest of the passengers boarded the aircraft, it was just nice to be on board the cool airbus rather than in the insane heat outside. I love the effect you get when you fly from hot countries with the air conditioning generating this steam. Eventually the doors were closed and we pushed back to begin our long taxi out to the runways here at Dubai. As we taxied out I got to see Josh's beautiful aircraft getting ready for departure to Tehran. Don't forget to check out his video flying on Mahan Air, I'll pop a link on the screen.
route today then took us along the Gulf, flying across Saudi Arabia, Jordan and Syria before starting our approach into Beirut. Flying time today was 2 hours 56 minutes, cruising at 32,000 feet. Alright, so airborne from Dubai on the MEA A321 Neo. The most bizarre experience ever. Literally the second the wheels came off the runway um, down in Dubai, these monitors came down and just started playing adverts. And, um, like, the wheels weren't even up yet and they... <laughs> And then the adverts were playing all over it. I mean, this is like a national airline, uh, full service airline. It's not a low cost airline or anything. So, um, yeah, that was interesting. Um, anyway, um, we are airborne from Dubai. People are getting comfortable, getting settled in by the looks of it. Um, and yeah, hopefully, have a nice little ride up to Beirut. The adverts continued as we climbed to cruising altitude, which is something I found a little bit bizarre for a national airline at least, and something that I've only ever really seen on low-cost airlines. All right, so about 10 minutes after takeoff, the adverts have finally stopped, um, and I can hope to get a word in edgeways. <laughs> um, it's very comfortable actually. See, it's loads of leg room, and the recline is really good. It's not a flat bed. Um, but it's a very nice reclining seat. It goes quite a long way back. Um, for a th three hour fly like this, not too bad at all really. So I'm looking forward to um, relaxing a little bit on this flight, um, I have to say. It's time for the No Phillips Blue Review. All right, time for an MEA Lou review on board the A321neo. Uh, pretty clean, pretty nice nick. It's a modern bathroom, of course, on the Neo. Very tidy and clean indeed. Typical toilet, two rolls of bog roll. A bit of a bin. Fasten seatbelt signs, things like that. Yeah, pretty nice so far. Crew so far have been pretty friendly. It's been quite nice. Um, we've just come around to our drinks orders for later on in the flight. Looking forward to that. Seeing what the in-flight service is like as well. It's kind of pretty cool. But yeah, so far so good on our, rear, on our ride up to Beirut. That was the Noel Phillips Blue Review. All right, it's lunchtime and the starters turned up. We've got um, I've gone for chicken today. It's a choice of either shrimp or chicken for the starter, and um, obviously I'm off fish at the minute, so um, the chicken it is for me. Let's give it a go. really nice actually and not dry at all which is pleasant and a nice change for airline food yeah pretty decent all right main course has arrived it was a choice of fish um, or veg vegetarian or what I've had which is the chicken and apparently it is a Lebanese national dish and I'm gonna absolutely butcher the pronunciation and I can't even remember what it's called <laughs> Bucha have been, I think, or something like that. My um, Lebanese and um, my Lebanese viewers will probably know what it is, and I'll probably get slated in the comments for um, saying that all wrong. But um, let's give it a go. It's basically chicken um, with um, pasta, little pasta balls and things. It's quite nice. That chicken is delicious. It's like a Sunday dinner back home. Very nice. Oh, and cheesy, cheesy balls. I suck on them. That is really nice. Proper nice. I'm really sorry if I mispronounced it or called it the wrong thing or whatever. Please let me know down in the comments or don't be too, don't be too nasty, please. Um, yeah, it's really nice. Lovely food. thing I'm finding out about ME8 is they do keep you incredibly well fed and um, we've literally not stopped eating since um, the beginning of the flight and now it's time for dessert um, and I've gone for a banana cake with um, a nice cup of coffee. All right, it's time for the section of the video that I've started calling What's on TV. And we're going to have a look at the in-flight entertainment system on the MEA A321 Neo. Let's have a look. So it's sort of down here. Um, see if I can bob it out.
It's very cool, it's electrical. You press the button and it moves it up and down. Look. It just falls down like that. Let's have a look. Welcome, seat 6D. 49 minutes to landing in Beirut. Let's have a look. It's been interesting not seeing um, this sort of style before in terms of the in entertainment, but um, let's have a little look through. All right, so we've got some Arabic movies there. Let's have a look. New releases. Sing 2. 18 game Matrix. I've heard terrible things about that movie, but I've not actually seen it. Um, quite a few movies there, though. Nice selection of movies. Uh, TV shows. Again, a few, few TV shows there to um, get you going. Uh, documentary, if you're interested in the Bank of Lebanon and their history, you can watch an hour-long documentary on that. But, um, yeah, not Michael Petit, personally. Um, and um, let's have a look. What else we got? A few games and stuff. Moving map. What we got? Which moving map is it today? Voyager 3D. Panasonic's airshow map. And it's basically the same as what we get up on the TV shows up there, on the display up there, but it's um, a little bit more interactive. Nice MEA plane there, circling round. Very nice. It's a good looking plane, isn't it? We can see where Mecca is. It's behind us. Oh, and the good old command centre view. I love this view. Look at this. Look, we've got ground speed, airspeed, altitude, distance from Dubai, outside air temperature, headwind, pitch and roll. Airspeed heading. Like this really cool thing here. So cool. So cool. Ah, not a bad entertainment on this flight, actually. So um, for a three-hour flight, that's pretty good. Keep yourself quite entertained, I think, um, on this one. After a couple of hours, it was time to start our descent towards the capital city of Lebanon, Beirut. All right, let's start our descent down into Beirut. Um, yeah, this is going to be fun, isn't it? I've um, not actually been to Beirut before or Lebanon, um, so it's going to be interesting flying in there, seeing what it's like. Um, can't wait, we'll be on the ground in about sort of, 10 minutes, I think, as we fly over the deserts of the Middle East. Look at that view, though. Wow. I'm not going to lie, the scenery in this part of the world looked absolutely stunning from above. The deserts gave way to mountains and eventually the Mediterranean Sea as we made our approach to Rafi Hariri International Airport, Beirut. We have just landed. Take care when opening the overhead bins as the contents may have shifted. Alright, welcome to Beirut in Lebanon, country number 80 for me, um, short stop today though here, heading off to hopefully find a lounge for my next ride to my next country, let's go and check it out. And now it was time to experience possibly the strangest transfer experience I've ever had at an international airport. To the office. Okay. All right, very strange. Apparently I've got to go to an office somewhere and they're going to have a look at my boarding pass and then I can go through security after that, so let's go and find it. Hello. Ah, hello. Transit. Transit, yeah. They sent me back here. Please, sir, from Just the down sign. there now, yeah. All right, thank you. See you. Hello, Transit, yeah. Yeah, thank you. All right, through the transit area here at Beirut. Um, I don't think they get that many transiting passengers here, I'm honest. It doesn't seem particularly well set up for connections, although they do have a connections lane, which is nice, but it's a bit sort of ramshackle. Um, 
and um, they were quite curious because they haven't seen a blue passport before from the UK um, and considering we've had them for about two years they can't get that many British people coming through I guess um, but it's interesting never mind we are airside now at Beirut I'm gonna try and find a lounge to pass a couple of hours until my next flight Beirut airport's pretty dark and dingy and there aren't that many places to sit Fortunately, the business class lounge here, the Cedar Lounge, more than makes up for the rest of the airport. So then folks, welcome to the Cedar Lounge here at Beirut Airport in Lebanon. Home, of course, to MEA, um, who we're flying on today. And I have to say, what an incredible, incredible lounge this is. There's this massive, spacious atrium area here. Um, it's so bright and airy, it's absolutely lovely. And then on this side, we've got these views here out over the action here at Beirut International Airport and all of the MEA planes, including the that retro liveried one right back there. Um, absolutely beautiful airport. And aside from the kind of strange transit experience down that little building site, little dingy corridor thing, but um, other than that, very nice indeed. Looking forward to having a bit of a bit of refreshment here, a bit of a bite to eat, and then we'll get on the next leg with MEA. I think on another A321neo, the next leg up to Istanbul, Turkey. One thing about this airport I've noticed is it's very, very smoky, um, and I mean like cigarette smoke. There's smoking lounges all over the airport with the doors open, um, so the smell of cigarette smoke is like everywhere. There's one like just behind me, for instance. Um, so yeah, if you if you um, are not a fan of, of cigarette smoke, well then you might not enjoy it here in Beirut, but um, never mind. Um, it's not too bad, I, I don't mind the smell myself, but um, anyway, I'm gonna head downstairs in a minute, I think, because Hopefully we should be boarding in the next sort of 10 minutes. So um, let's take a wander and see if we can find the plane. Thank you, bye-bye. All right then, let's go and see if we can find our gate for our flight over to Istanbul. It was time to find my way through the airport to find my gate. This beautiful retro livery A320 was on the gate next to mine, but um, sadly I wasn't flying on it today. Business class were called for boarding right behind the wheelchair passengers. I did have to try and stop people from pushing right past them though, which wasn't brilliant. It really frustrates me sometimes how impatient people can be. Hello, how are you? Good? Hello. Welcome aboard. Thank you. You're welcome. Sorry. It's okay, don't worry, no, no rush. All right, then on board once again on the MEA A321neo. Not the same one we were on earlier. That one's, oh, it might be actually, I'm not sure. Um, I'll check the reg, but um, yeah, very nice. Again, very comfortable once more, just like the previous one. One thing I've noticed here, actually, with MEA is people are so impatient when you're trying to board the plane. Um, I was following this um, old lady who couldn't walk that great on the way down the jet bridge, and people were just barging past, like pushing her out of the way to try and get past. She's in a wheelchair, like for goodness sake, you're in that much of a rush, you're gonna sort of barge in front of a wheelchair passenger to try and get on board the flight. So I'm stood there like trying to use my um, size to my advantage and trying to stop people trying to come past. And I think I managed it a little bit, but um, goodness me, uh, very frustrating indeed. And um, we were all kind of on the same plane anyway, so what is the point? But anyway, never mind. we're on board now, next leg. About an hour and a half, I think, over to um, Istanbul, Turkey. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome on board. May I have your attention, please? To fasten your seatbelt. To unfasten your seatbelt. Once again the ads started as soon as the wheels left the ground. I was soon coming to realise that MEA have more ads crammed in than a Noel Phillips video. The next flight then took us across the Mediterranean crossing Cyprus before coasting into Turkey. Flight time was 1 hour and 30 minutes cruising at 36,000 feet.
we got a great view of Cyprus as we flew right overhead. My first time ever flying over this country. All right, so a beautiful departure from Beirut there. I got some fantastic views as we turned out from their airports and headed out across the Mediterranean Sea. Um, and we've just crossed the northern tip of Cyprus as well, um, which is pretty cool. I've never been to Cyprus, actually. Um, it's a bit strange thing as it's like a typical holiday destination for Brits, and I've never actually been there. Um, so it'd be nice to get there at some point, I think. But um, today we make do with the views from 32,000 feet as we fly right over the top um, and have a good look down on them from above. Um, so far so good with MEA the airport in Beirut is a bit strange and probably not the best but I have to say a lot of people have been telling me um, even Lebanese people apologising for their national airline and the state that it's in and for the surly cabin crew and the state of the aircraft and I have to say so far it's been pretty damn good um, the cabin crew have been downright brilliant to be honest especially on this fly they're so lovely so friendly um, and understanding and it's just lovely and the customer service is just great as well they're coming around with drinks constantly always with a smile on their face and this aircraft is just so brilliant I mean just look A321 Neo um, so much legroom and it's quite nice down the back by the looks of it as well personal TVs and all sorts of stuff there's Wi-Fi on board which, which we've not tried yet either I give that a go in a bit on this fly but yeah, by and large, really impressed with MEA. They are far better than people give them credit for, in my experience, based on these two flights. The um, only issue seems to be really, and I hate to say this, but some of the passengers. Some of the passengers are a bit rude and um, not very nice to the crew or to other passengers in general, really. Um, but other than that, the MEA experience has been pretty nice so far. Right, so it may only be an hour and a half flight, but we still get a meal service on board. And I think by the time they've got to me, there's only one choice left, which is this. Um, it is Rizzolo, I think she said. I'm probably butchering all these pronunciations. It's beef, basically. Um, not that hungry, because I've got a big meal on the way over from Dubai. But um, I'll certainly give it a go, see what it's like. It tastes a bit like Parma ham or something like that. That's all right, not bad, just a snacky thing. So my flight on MEA today cost me £720 for a one-way business class flight from Dubai to Istanbul. Now compare that to Emirates on the same route, they were charging about £1,500. The cheapest alternative was Royal Jordanian, they were still £1,200. Um, and they were on much older A320s than MEA operate on their flights. And that's the thing, Emirates and Qatar Airways and Etihad, the big Middle East three airlines, they're fantastic if you want to fly from Europe to a long haul destination like Asia or Australasia or even Africa. Um, and they have some quite good deals on those routes. But what if your destination is the Middle East from Europe? Um, suddenly Emirates and Etihad, their fares can be quite steep for what they are because you're just taking like a, a non-stop flight. In that case, airlines like MEA are fantastic because with this stop in Beirut, you can be anywhere in the Middle East with like two or three hour flights either side of Beirut. And for that, this A321neo with these amazing business class seats and even a nice economy down the back, um, it's a no-brainer really. I mean, sure, the airport in Beirut is a bit of a bus station. It's not the nicest airport to fly through. But with a little bit of work there, that could be absolutely fantastic. And with the service that MEA offer, the quality of the food, the quantity of the food, and the customer service on board, it's just absolutely phenomenal. And that would make, to me, flying on MEA in the future an absolute no-brainer when it comes to flying in this part of the world. And with that we started our descent towards Istanbul, which treated us to some incredible views as we made our way down. We flew right over the top of Sabia Gokchen Airport, home of course to Pegasus. And here, of course, is the old Atatürk Airport, still used for cargo and more recently as a vaccination centre.
I really enjoyed my flight with MEA. The crew were so lovely and the aircraft were really nice too. The only thing that let them down a bit really was the airport in Beirut, but the CD lounge did more than make up for it. Of course the likes of Emirates and Qatar Airways will give you a much more polished experience, but that does come at a price and for what you pay, I wouldn't have any problems flying MEA again. I imagine your London flights must be difficult, a long day. <laughs> yeah, long day, London, five hours or so, yeah. yeah. Exactly. yeah. Day, yeah. yeah. For one night. For one night, yeah. yeah. We love Primark. Yeah. <laughs> Primark, yeah. <laughs> yeah, everybody loves Primark. <laughs> As always, a massive thank you to my patrons for helping to make these videos possible. You can join them at the link on the screen now for access to my WhatsApp group, live Zoom calls with me, and much, much more. Hi, and welcome to Istanbul International Airport, the new airport here. Uh, fantastic ride over with MEA from Dubai. Really enjoyed that. Fantastic service from the crew and everything. Lovely seats as well um, on the A321 Neo. Give them a go if you need to go to that part of the world. Why wouldn't you try MEA? Cheap, comfortable, nice service and fantastic food as well. So um, yeah, thank you MEA for a great flight. Um, I'm off now to get me next one. Somewhere else exotic, another country on this trip. It's just going on and on, isn't it? They keep bringing it new content every week. You must love it um, to keep coming back and watching it anyway. But um, yeah, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss the next one. And in the meantime, thank you so much for watching. Take care and I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.